little All right, bit. I like that. Hey, everybody, went right to it. Must be magic. <laughs> I've been holding on to that one. Uh, hey, everybody, it is Thursday, March 15th, the Ides of March. I just thought about that. Look, I know my history. Uh, welcome to The Ted Show, episode 138. Let us know you can hear us or see us. I am with my guest, Nathan Co. Marsh. Right? Yeah. Okay, I yeah, did it. I did it. it. You did it. Yeah. Uh, look, and he is in awesome TCU purple. I don't know if you're an LSU fan, but we'll go with purple. I hadn't even thought of that. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. so uh, let us know you can hear us or see us. I see some thumbs coming up. That means people can hear us or see us. Hey, Sharon. Uh, and I don't know if you know about live, but that number yeah. thing that goes up there, that's not accurate. Do you know you can sign on without people knowing? Oh, that's cool. That's why at so, the very end of the show, pe people are like, I had nobody on. Hey, Susie, I had nobody on. And I'm like, yes, you did. Watch. And sure <laughs> enough, there's like 150 people watching. And, and we add, you know, our friends at the NSA, we say hello to you as well. That, because it's not just... <laughs> yes. Not they just are definitely guys, following the yeah. TED show, I can tell you right now. I'm going to go ahead and share this Please, as well. Please, share. And if you have a second, we're going to be talking about some different Look, stuff. Look, hi, we're Robert. That Robert must be somebody you know. Robert Dan, unless I do. Robert, see, isn't it crazy? You have to look up there. Sure, sure. Hi, Robert. Hi, Good Robert. Job. Glad you could Susie, join us. Sharon. There's Nathan. He's oh, on. He's watching. That's right. He's he watching. watching. All right, so give us a little history on you, and thank you guys for tuning in. You've got a great history. Your bio, I said, was one of the best ones that I've seen, not to give anybody a hard time, but it was organized in a fashion that made sense to me because it talked about specific areas of your life and what you do and sure. how you live, and so I loved it. So, again, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. And then give us a little bit of Nathan is cute. Yep. Ha, hey, hey, Eddie. Oh, thank you. Eddie Nickel. Eddie, do you know Eddie? I do not know Eddie's Eddie. Eddie's amazing. He oh, owns okay. Funky Monkey. Oh, cool. uh, out on I Drive, out in Point Orlando, and he's so, a restaurateur here. Yeah, we haven't met, but I've enjoyed your product, so that is fantastic. See, he's yeah. awesome. awesome. All right, so give us a little history sure. about you. Yeah, so uh, I uh, was about 11 years old, and a friend of my father's, a really interesting guy, kind of modern Renaissance man type character, uh, he was over at a dinner party with my parents, and he borrowed a dollar bill, and he just kind of slowly let go. And that thing stayed floating in midair, like right in front of my eyes. And I, I freaked out. I was <laughs> 11, 12 years old. I was like incredibly excited. And so I got very interested in learning magic, and it became kind of a uh, hidden passion, a hidden hobby. It wasn't something I shared, it wasn't something I performed until much later. In college, I got a job on the Pocono Mountains in Pennsylvania. Uh, oh, the Pocono. The Pocono. Is that where you're from up there? No, it's not. It's um, <laughs> I, uh, I wanted a summer job and I wanted something that tied into, at that point, magic was completely off my radar as a career option, but I wanted a uh, summer job that tied into something that I enjoyed doing and uh, so I posted on a camp website kind of my resume connected with magic and uh, uh, somebody found it and uh, was kind enough to hire me to uh, spend a summer teaching magic. So you taught that? I but you taught had, as had a, you performed before not that? Not really. So, so okay, for so friends or, or um, I'd done one night kind of filling in in high school for a friend who was a restaurant magician and uh, that was the first time I really put together a full show. And the first show that was first organized, like half of the kids were kind of in my cabin. So they'd been spending uh, six weeks living with you and kind of were, were looking up to you as they do. And uh, so you already had some of that. And it's one of those nights that, that entertainers will tell you, there's some nights where, you know, you reach a level where it's always at a, it's always at a certain quality, right? But there's some nights where you just can't you can't do wrong, it's, and it's about the connection to the audience. It's sure. about they're just picking up what you're doing, and it's like this dance, and there's this connection, um, and it's an amazing feeling when all of that clicks, and when you walk out of that theater, and the endorphins are just driving through, um, and uh, that was that kind of night, and it was the night, and I realized I realized it was kind of what I was supposed to do. That's your epiphany. We talk about epiphanies um, on the show. All yeah, the time. yeah. That was your moment. It, it really kind of was, and so I. Uh, was then fortunate, I didn't know that it would be practical, but one of those kids uh, the next summer hired me for his bar mitzvah in New York City, and that was in March of 2004, and so we're now, it was the first kind of official event, so we're now celebrating 14 years uh, in the business this March. That's amazing. And were you nervous at that? Were you, because yeah. that, that, that's your first real paid yeah. sort of big gig that you yeah. I hate to use the word. My wife gives me a hard time about the word gig, but I don't know. I'm not, no, she shouldn't. She shouldn't. I love the word gig. Oh, because see? Do you, know, do you know where the word gig comes from? No, tell me. So the word gig come, came from uh, Depression-era jazz musicians, and it stands for God is Great. 
and it's a it's a statement of humility and gratitude for the opportunity to uh, do something you love and and earn some money in exchange for it. So I, I think owe you it's big a, time for that. Yeah, yeah. so share She's that with She's not going to correct me anymore. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a fan of I love gig. Day. All right, yeah, so the, your first gig was yep. a bar mitzvah in New York. Yeah. Again, you're not from there, so you're up there no, working no. now. No, no, so I, I, you know, and it was, you learn different lessons, so it was, I think, in an airport bathroom that somehow they had these weird sensors at the time that turn the water on and so like my case full of gear got wet it was oh, weird but no um, but yeah you learned you learned little lessons and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that was the first time they've lost my luggage which has continued since <laughs> yeah. so now I uh, it disappears it does it does they have their have their own kind of they have their own, own kind, kind of magic, magic. Up there, for sure but uh, uh, yeah and so it it was I, was that a magical event too? Your first event? Yeah, so, yeah so it was that, great. Not to use that word, overuse right, that word, right. but that was a that was another moment where you're like, okay, it was solidified. This is this is what I want to do, and sure. oh my gosh, I'm going to get paid to do this, right, right, which is awesome. Yeah. And so, where do you take your career from there? So from there, it's all about. I, I'm a big believer, and I think this works in almost any entrepreneurial career. I'm a big believer in, in two different tracks. So there's a product track, and there's the there's the business track, and the business track is about you know, maximizing your revenue, maximizing, you know, for me it was getting, getting, reaching a level with the brand where I can command the, the pricing that I wanted to um, and have people coming to me to, to, to get what I'm, what I'm offering. But you also have, you know, I'm a big believer in, it's a cliche now, but the 10,000 hours and Malcolm Gladwell and uh, finding opportunities as well that make you uncomfortable, that, that force you to grow, that you're doing not just for the business reasons, but that you're doing uh, to develop whatever it is that you do at the very highest level. So I started off and I found a dinner theater in Sarasota, Florida called the Golden Apple, which sadly uh, is no more. And uh, basically I came to them with the offer of I will entertain your guests for I found there was about an hour bumper period after uh, after their food had hit and before the show started where I would visit table to table and give kind of a VIP experience and some, some up close sleight of hand but the offer I came to them with was you know pay me pay me for one night and I'm under no obligation for this but if I'm not if I'm not available I will if I'm not doing something else I will come out and I will perform you know kind of whenever I want to because it's really important to me at this point to get as much experience sure. in front of real, real people as you yep. can and so I went uh, seven nights a week and I wow. for, for six months and just and at the same time a little after that I was developing my, my stage program, and so I was developing that uh, at a comedy club in Clearwater. Um, and so I was driving, I was, I was in the Tampa area, driving between Tampa and Sarah, between Clearwater and Sarasota a lot, just to get on as many stages as you can, just to get as much experience as you can. You were and, creating that though. What, what yeah. you said earlier was interesting. You found that dinner theater in Sarasota and you created the opportunity. Sure. Right? You, you basically created it and then you presented it to them, which I think is an important thing for a lot of people. A lot of people like to sit back yeah. and wait. I've got all this talent, I have this desire and this drive, and then they sit back and wait, but you shouldn't just sit back and wait. He, Nathan actually created it. He created that whole seven days a week for six months. Yeah, and it's and it's being very clear about what you want, and what you need to hit the next level, you know. So and and that was a really interesting time because you know you're working comedy clubs, and here's somebody who's uh, and I was fortunate that the owner liked me enough to use me in this way. But here's somebody who's expecting, you know, they're expecting a comic, they're expecting a nationally touring comic, and uh, for ten minutes it's like here's this young kid uh, doing card tricks on stage. <laughs> How did that go? Uh, First of all, you must yeah. you've got the you've got the charisma and the. Uh, authenticity I think to convince anybody to hire you which is an awesome thing but you had he had to believe in you or he or she sure. had to believe in you and you probably didn't have a lot of time to convince him so he takes a chance on you and so what happens that first night when you're doing your performance? Yeah, it went well. But 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 what was interesting at that time, right, is it's very because as you're learning to as you're learning to get up on a stage in front of a bunch of strangers and as somebody who they have zero expectations of, as somebody they don't particularly they didn't come to see you. Um, when you're first starting out, it takes a lot of experience to learn how to do that. So you've got you've got nights where you're you're way up and everything is clicking and it's amazing and those mean so much back then, right? They mean so much. But there are also nights where it just dies and it's utterly humiliating and you want 
you know, you don't want to look the people in the eyes as you're walking out of that room, and you never want to see those people again. You want like a little button that'll just make you vanish. Um, and I think that's really, that's really important because it gives you, if you push through that, it gives you a fearlessness about getting in front of, sure. because you're not, you know, you're creating a connection with other people, you're creating a connection with strangers, but you're not dependent on their approval. Um, for your That's own. so important. Say that again. I yeah, that. you're not, you're not, you're relating to them, you're communicating with them, you're having a relationship with them, but you're not dependent on their approval for your own, awesome. um, for your own work. And that's, and that's, and what's, what's interesting is that's when they fall in love with you too. <laughs> that's <laughs> true. You know, it's when they, they can relax and feel like they're in the hands of somebody who's confident and is going to take care of them and that this is going to be an, an amazing experience um, for everyone. And that's, that's served me really well, because a lot of the work I do now, and we're kind of we're fast forward. Yeah, let's but, talk about that. Um, yeah, a lot of the work I do now is you know, corporate events, and so it's... Uh, and you don't do corporate events just to go and do sleight of hand. No. There's a whole message behind what you do and the, and the presentation that you give. So how did you make the transition sure. from you're doing shows, you're doing yeah. comedy theaters, and all of a sudden you go, you know, I could apply this across the board to businesses. Why, right. don't, I, why don't I put something together? How did that all come to Yeah, I, I, to be honest, I mean, I've been involved in the corporate market from as soon as I kind of had a product, because I realized, you know, those parallel tracks, that was kind of my revenue track from the very beginning, was, was let, me, um, let me do these events, because there was, there was a real opportunity there, and living in Orlando, you know, we have 65 million visitors, um, it's been really nice for me. I've, I've just recently got back from from a trip to Tahiti for performing, but it's wow. been it's been great to you know here be able to you know um, last week was was at the Four Seasons and then the night before that at the Intercontinental in Miami. But to be able to not have to go on you know get get very close and friendly with a TSA officer <laughs> and you know all of the uh, all the stress that comes with that right. there's some great opportunities so so it's always been a market that I've, I've been very interested in and the message is you know it starts from understanding you know what is it that they're trying to accomplish with this meeting you right. know what is their what is their message and realizing it's a hard transition for a lot of entertainers because you know, people go on stage because they want to be the center of attention and they want to be noticed and they want to be the stars. And it takes it takes a willingness to kind of step back and realize that, yes, yeah, sometimes that's that's your role, but sometimes it's also your role to make someone else shine. Sure. And sometimes it's your role to to communicate a message in a in a different, effective way. So uh, one And that's difficult for entertainers in general yeah. because it is all about that immediate feedback. It's about that uh, connection and so sure. it's all about you but if you can step like you're saying if you can step outside just a little bit and take the time to make it about somebody yeah. else and realize that you have multiple roles uh, that's where you can take it for the business that's why you asked me before we went on camera about product is that so you asked me about product I love that the two streams I think that's awesome. yeah yeah so so you know like an example so we had a group uh, that was doing an incentive event in Tampa a few years back and these were their call center people, and so their theme was that their people are the, are the superheroes of the organization. And so when everyone arrived, uh, I had arranged for there to be a little card on each table, and a little pen or pencil that says, um, if I could have any superpower, it would be. And they would write that down. And that was kind of an icebreaker for them, because these were people from different offices all over the country who, who hadn't been together. So it starts the conversations at the table, and then in the show, one person got the superpower that they had wanted in an interesting way on stage. Very cool. So, yeah, so it's about saying, you know, how can we take um, what somebody's trying to communicate with an event, what somebody's trying to make happen, and flesh it out in three dimensions in a way that, you know, message is important, but if people aren't paying attention to your message, it doesn't matter at all. Correct. So how do we, um, you know, how do we help you get that focus on it? How do we, you know, so yeah, and, and a lot of the work is just is is just entertainment. It's just here's a group of salespeople, and we're going to do a show for them, and and have an amazing time. And, I think a lot of people when they go to those either payoff trips or their team building trips or or events, and you're hosting, they're going into it with the mindset of, okay, I can relax for a minute. And I think that if you provide some entertainment, which you obviously do, and that's really what it's all about, getting them to engage with you, trust you, 
and then they feel comfortable with you. Sure. Once they feel comfortable with you, you can kind of uh, go along with the situation and kind of create something for them that they never thought that would happen in that particular meeting, which is the magic, I'm gonna use that word, as yeah. much as possible. So Bob says, who's hot? And I, I think that's definitely a reference to that jacket. <laughs> that is not, that is, thank you very much. That is, that is uh, actually Bernard. Bob's, uh, that's Bob's logo, that's Bob's oh, cool. branding. Cool. Uh, Bob has a radio show, and Bob's actually coming on my show on the 30th oh, awesome. of March. Awesome. Uh, but who's hot and who's hot Orlando is his kind of uh, branding that he does for events and things like that. Oh, so I love it. I love he it. pops on all the time. I see Gert, Andre's on. Somebody said hi to you earlier, which I oh, missed, awesome. and I apologize, but we will get to all that. So, well, hello, um, Internet. We're gonna hello, gonna... Internet. Yeah. Uh, so what are some of the things when, you are, when you're going in and you're doing sure. a show, what are some of the things that people push back on? Because obviously when yeah. you're doing something, you're training, and do you do only big shows? Do you do small groups? Oh, I do a wide range. So I, um, you know, and, and in terms of pushback, you know, I mean, there are different challenges for different groups. So I've, I've done a group of uh, 600 uh, IT engineers at 8 in the morning who were German. <laughs> How did you get setup past for that one? Perfect setup for comedy. <laughs> uh, so you kind of, you know, they're, they're but, but I think what it goes down to a lot, so, so the big resistance can be, you know, uh, coming up on stage, you know, not everybody wants to do that necessarily, and it's a very interactive show because it, it is important to me that, uh, that the audience really is the stars of the show. It's not, you know, um, and there's some wonderful things that happen when you bring people on stage. Absolutely. Um, and so it's kind of, you know, it's establishing that trust very early in the show, so it's doing something that's, that's very amazing, that grabs their attention. Um, it's then moving into, and this is something I, I teach, I have a program for, for event planners that's based on like how do I structure a show and how do we apply that structure to, in their case, an event. But I think it, I think it might be even more broadly applicable, but um, it's about creating focus first. It doesn't matter you know, what's happening if people, if you don't have their, their attention first, so it's first you do something that creates focus, then it's about building rapport and building relationships, and you have something that establishes you as a personality and has them feeling that they're gonna be taken care of, so if they come up on stage, they realize, you know, that's my home, and you are a guest, and I'm gonna treat you as a, Correct. As a guest, oh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're gonna have fun, but it's not gonna be at your expense, it's gonna be, you know, it's Love something that. we're doing together, and they, they kind of pick up on that. And then that third phase is you deliver um, a really powerful, just just amazing, high energy thing. That third place, whatever you're trying to do, if you're trying to have an effective message, if you're, that's that second to last kind of place that you put it. And then the last place is what's the emotional reaction that you want as they're as they're leaving the theater, or as they're leaving your event, or as uh, they're clicking away from your web page. Um, you know, there there are different ways sure. of applying that structure. But yeah, I think if you get those first two elements right. You don't get that pushback because they, you have their attention and you have a relationship established with them and they're comfortable and they're confident and they, they know they're going to be treated well and they want to be a part of things. So that's, that's kind of the that's goal. Awesome. Is to, and then you mentioned the event planning, which we have sure. a lot of people who plan events, host events, restaurateurs like Eddie. Um, tell us about that because we haven't talked about that yet. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I've been, um, there's, a, there's an amazing group, and I see uh, Selena, Hi, Selena. Uh, just came in, so great to see you, uh, who, who I know through this group, which is Meeting Professionals International here in Orlando, and um, which is basically an industry group for vendors and planners and whatnot that comes together on a monthly basis. You know, they have networking events as well, but, but uh, with educational events that are how can we have more effective how can we have more effective events? How can we do that? And I, I encourage people, you know, I saw something very interesting. So my, my girlfriend has been very active in um, uh, comic book conventions. And she's somebody, she works with an agency that arranges these various celebrity appearances that they do the autograph very signings cool. and stuff. Oh, it's yeah, it's really cool what she does. Um, but she noticed a friend of mine had, had who I know through the professional event planning committee, uh, community, excuse me, not committee, had a, uh, He's only uh, drinking water, folks. It's I only, I promise it's water. Hi, Tyler, promise, by the way. Tyler promise it's that. water. How are you, Tyler? Uh, yeah, actually, he's got the hash MPI Orlando. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and this is somebody who came from the event industry and started running a comic book convention, uh, multiple events now in his company. But we, we visited in one of his conventions, and she said that was the most relaxed person I've ever seen running these. 
that so often that somebody's got their hair pulling out and they've got all this stress and all this tension um, because very often it's somebody who does something else and they're pulled into that role and it's just as you know I wouldn't ask a, a how I wouldn't I wouldn't be expected to professionally house paint somebody's house or put a roof on and I wouldn't expect a roofer to do a to do a Correct. magic show for a thousand Correct. people um, event planning is one of those people things that you can kind of sort of half do on your own and because of that I think it's it's not done at the level it could be done and so I'd encourage people who are who are who are interested in that or pursuing that there's some amazing professional resources here in Orlando. Well, MPI Orlando. Um, is, then, yeah, absolutely. And Mary says that's a good angle for the camera for you guys today. That's oh, all, all the credit goes to Nathan. <laughs> uh, wine room. She knows about the wine room. And then absolutely. she said this is a really great topic today for engaging your audience when you plan events. She's an event planner at Disney. Oh, awesome. Oh, fantastic, Mary. Yeah, she does Very a lot cool. of it. She does all of the things. This, there's this thing apparently called a 5K and a run, and I don't really do any exercise, so <laughs> that's a it's a total urban legend. But you've heard about it. I've heard about it. I've read about it. I might have seen oh, pictures, oh, oh. but I had to turn away. Uh, yeah. But she's an event planner there, so awesome. I think speaking to the event planners, there's a lot of people who are engaged. Eddie's back on. People who are really planning events. Sure. Run Disney. That's it, Mary. Um, in this town, but yeah. like you said, there are a lot of people who halfway do it they determine, hey, I'm an event planner today. Sure, uh, sure. And then there's not a lot of thought that goes into it, and there's a lot of different moving pieces that you have to really pay attention to. Well, and there's also, yeah, and so there's, yeah, there are all these moving pieces going, so that just getting the logistics to work out feels like a success, right? Let alone thinking it through from the perspective of your audience. What, what really matters to them and what's gonna pull them in? And Disney's an amazing example because, um, and I think it's an amazing example of a lot of things, the processes that they have in place. Okay. So uh, a lot of my, I perform as well on cruise ships, and one of the things that among cruise ship performers, Disney's, famous for and a little bit infamous for too is they're the only line that every single show is recorded and somebody in the land office watches it and takes notes that are then that then make their way back to the performer awesome. eventually that's and good so it's that it, yeah, it is it is and so it's that passion for how do we how do we make processes that ensure that everything is taken care of and that puts the guest at the very center of it Love that. And so that's uh, which is sort of the theme of what you do. You're trying to put the guest sure. at the center, the sure. audience members, same thing, yeah. at the center of everything. And that's I think I think when people have a perform a, an entertainer, a performer, or even a speaker, which is what you are, all three, uh, and they don't feel the connection or they don't mm -hmm. feel like there's any authenticity, they check out. And so Disney, yeah. I love Disney cruises. I haven't been on one in a long time. My kids will tell you. Uh, but I love them, and one of the things I love is those perform you always feel like you're engaged and you're important. You're an yes. important part. You are part of it, and if you're not feeling what they're doing, then they're not, they don't feel good about what they're doing, and they make that very well known. I mean, you're yeah. surveyed to death at Disney, not to get, but that's a good thing. I want them to know sure. what I'm feeling. But the performers, the performances on a Disney cruise to me are just second to none. There's no, nothing like it. And, and it starts at a basic level, which is, and this goes back to Walt, which is what, putting yourself inside of the head, of, and this is whatever you're doing, really climbing into the head of the person who's at the other end of that interaction. So he's sitting there and he's watching, how many steps do people take before they throw away a piece of garbage? And, and we're gonna have a garbage stuff. can every, whatever it is, 10 feet yep. that he's decided. And also it's about what are people looking at as they're coming in. And there's always, there's always something of interest to, and this is really interesting whenever you're having to move large groups of people, right? What, is Disney, what, do, what does Disney do? They, they build that anticipation by there's something visual that's drawing you forward to the next place where they want everybody to go. Right. So you come, you, know, you come through the trams, there's Cinderella's Correct. castle, and you, you know, so it's, <laughs> it's nothing is accidental and it's all based on Doing everything we can to understand uh, what's the audience looking at when they're when they're looking at our product, when they're experiencing our product, and that applies for you know uh, making loans. That applies to, to oh, he got shows. it in there. That, to, that was uh, very good, very good. I appreciate that. <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> I love you too, Stephanie. Thanks for loving the show. She's awesome. awesome. Thank you. All Stephanie. right. So before we get to the closeout part, sure. you are very charitable. You uh, listed things that you do, and so what's, what are some of the charities, uh, you obviously have a heart for 
philanthropy and so what is something you try that you yeah you try and it's not always you, you never when somebody says it like that you always feel like oh but you could be doing more we all uh, feel that yeah, way but sure, at least sure. we're doing something yeah that's what i feel yeah there's absolutely. a lot of people i know it's it's actually kind of an amazing conversation to have with people they're like how do you go to so many events mm -hmm. well i'm exhausted 24 7 coffee helps Having a flexible schedule helps, yeah. but that doesn't mean, but I love it. It feeds my soul sure. to give back to sure. them and do whatever I can. For some people, that's not even in their thought process. If you ask them the last time they cut a check to charity or went to a charity yeah. event, they would have to think on it for, sure. I'll be at three other events before they get back to the answer on me. But you listed it in your bio, and that's why I want yeah, to talk Yeah, no, about. absolutely. So, so um, some of the things um, that, that matter to me, um, I felt incredibly fortunate that here, I, I mean, I look at this very unique place in history that we are, where I'm able to do what I love and, and make a living at it. And there are a lot of things contributing to that. But one of those is that there are many periods where being a young man in his 20s, um, you know, we've had two wars going on uh, basically my entire adult life. And the only reason that I haven't had to be directly involved. The only reason that I haven't, you know, been at, is that there are people who have raised their hand and said, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna take that on Amen. for the rest of you, so that you can continue that." So I've I've tried to do some some um, I I toured over the summer uh, with Armed Forces Entertainment, uh, visiting different bases in in Alaska and Greenland and Honduras. Um, and uh, I've worked with um, a great program in uh, St. Petersburg, it was Operation Stand Down, where they basically, really incredible program, they take uh, about three days and they provide services to homeless veterans that are difficult for them to, it, and so it can be a day of where they're getting training and they're getting job training and they're getting that very practical stuff, but it can also just be a day where there are concerts and performances and they get, um, meals from restaurants that they're they're not getting and they're able to get a shower and a haircut and and it's not just so so what I love is they're giving the very practical services that are helpful in taking that next step and getting out of the situation they're in but they're also saying hey you're a human being and you've you've you know let's treat you with some dignity especially given what you've given the rest of us you know um, and so that's an incredible group I've, I've been fortunate to perform for. Um, and so I try to, yeah, I try to find those opportunities. I like opportunities. how you frame that in the beginning, though, because we've had, I've never served, but I am blessed to not have served. And I think, for me, but what a blessing it is for all of the men and women who have raised their hand. I love how yeah. you put that. So I'm a, I'm a big, that's why I've wanted to bring it up. I'm, I'm a huge supporter of anything that's veteran-centric. Uh, we're working on a project right now. Uh, Library of Congress has... Their representative has tasked me to interview veterans um, Fantastic. for perpetuity for the, their legacy program. Awesome. And so we have already interviewed several and we have more coming up and it's just, uh, I've brought somebody professional in because the ones that I've done mm -hmm. are TED show ones and I love the way the show is, but I really want to give them sure. the legacy that they yes. deserve. Yep. So we have a professional person, who Jeff Pius, who was on the show, I'm not sure if he's still awesome. watching, uh, that's going to film it. But those kinds of projects are so important. They've been through so much that you and I can't understand, but we can certainly support them and be thankful for their service. So, Absolutely. All right, so uh, we're going to provide all of Nathan's contact information, how you reach him, more about his programs. He's got a Facebook page. He's got a, a second Facebook page, which I love. He's got his business page, basically. Uh, the Nathan Co. Marsh Show, I think, is your yes, Facebook yeah, page. Yes, yeah, I'm impressed, yeah. Um, and so I don't remember what I had for breakfast, but I certainly <laughs> will remember that. Uh, any parting words of wisdom for them? Anything you want to share with them? You know, um, we talked a little bit earlier about about kind of captivating audiences and stuff like that. And one of the favorite moments that happened in my career was I was listening, I was stuck in traffic and headed to an event and I, I planned early enough so that I wasn't really stressed out but I wasn't gonna arrive when I wanted to. I was listening to uh, an old Alan Watts lecture and Alan was kind of the person who brought a lot of Eastern teaching to the Western tradition in the 70s and had these amazing lectures on Zen and he was talking about how um, much more beautiful just a, a flower is than sort of a, a debutante because there's no self-awareness. 
There's no, it's not aware of its beauty, there's no effort, there's no trying, there's no, just, just is what it is. And that afternoon at that event, I made a conscious decision to just shut off what I call the voice, which is that, that thing that's back there that as we're going is evaluating ourselves as we're doing it. That's saying, oh, what about this? What about that? And it's coming to us from a place of fear and restriction. And to just step forward and just do and just be. And um, I, I think that's huge, to, to, to shut that voice off and to be willing to really ask yourself, am I here right now in this moment listening to the person that's in front of me? And I think that's, uh, that's been a huge, huge help to me and, and hopefully to others. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming oh, my pleasure. on. Yeah. You know, so a lot of people think, I, I always, I, I'm a big friend person, I'll hug you and love you first and then you have to prove me wrong. Uh, so when I say that you're my friend, a lot of people go, you have all these friends, how do you have them all? Are we ever going to meet people that you haven't mm -hmm. met before? Well, Nathan and I haven't met until about 20 minutes, 30 minutes ago. So you can see that you can engage with people if you're open to it uh, and you haven't met them. So I encourage you guys all the time to be open to people, to really receive them and then be authentic and vulnerable with people because I think it's so important. It allows that immediate open dialogue that we couldn't have had unless yeah. both of us were in the same place, which yeah. we are. Uh, but I love what you said today. I think it was very powerful, very important. So thank you for being on the show. We love you guys. Thank you so much. Tomorrow I've got a big show. If any of you want to come and be in the audience or pop on camera with me tomorrow, we've got some announcements. We're going to do a special interview. They're going to interview me. Um, but we have some projects that are coming up that I'm really super excited about. And I would love to have an audience for it. And the club said, bring it. So come on up. Make sure you're dressed properly. Um, <laughs> I'll provide the wine whatever you want to drink, pretty much. Uh, and then let's have a good time tomorrow and let's announce what's going on. I'm very excited about it, but uh, thanks, Nathan, for coming on. You guys, are, you guys are all great. Appreciate you. Love you. See you tomorrow.